Hello and welcome to the All Around Natural Beauty channel. All right. Okay, let me get my glasses on. Y'all are ready for me. Uh-oh. One moment. Let me get set up here. Get my get my sound ready. All right. I was trying to do this backstage here, but uh here we go. Yay, all right. We have um our Already somebody starting off. Hello, uh, Doreen Arnold. Thank you so much for um, being the first one here. I'm uh, super, super. I'm just I'm, I'm just excited about what's happening here. I can't. Um, I'm overwhelmed. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Oh, I'm an eyes. Hey, y'all. All right. So welcome to the All Around Natural Beauty show. Please go ahead. When y'all get in here, click that like button. And um, uh, click the like button on your way in here. This is um, kind of an old channel of mine that has uh, been resuscitated, per se, um, recently. And uh, one thing that's really just kind of um, happened just recently was with this uh, Shanquilla Robinson story. And it's been very emotional, not only for me, but I had noticed that it was extremely emotional out in the, oh my goodness, here we go. This is the lady that started, thank you, unbiased and unbiased, says, hey, I pinned your post in the video. Thank you so much. I wasn't even aware um, of, you know, that happened and the, the lead attorney brought it to my attention and I'm just super excited that more of us are, um, you know, coming together and spreading the word. And we are seeing in our, our, our lifetime here that we're going to get justice finally for, for, for this. And th we know that this isn't the first time something like this has happened. However, this is, you know, for me, like I said, I'm, I'm 51 y'all. I was around with the Rodney King thing and I'm, let me just slow down real quick. And I want to start slow so we could really get off up in here. This this whole thing is happening fast, right? It's happening fast and everybody is, you know, has a lot of emotions behind this. And um, so, you know, we want to like really, really be wise with how we're doing this, right? Because like I said, this is kind of actively happening. My history is I, I'm 51 years old. I'll be 52 shortly in a few weeks. And uh, thank you. Yes, I know. Yeah. Um, and I have 30 years, over 30 years of nursing experience. I've um, worked for many years working with patients on ventilators. I've worked for many years working in the ICU, critical care, trauma. So I, I know a little bit something. I know a lot of it about stuff. I've seen many of um, cold cases, you know, when we do CPR, life-saving measures, I've seen Plenty of patients die. I've worked in oncology. I've worked in different settings. I've, I've seen a lot of um, dynamics and stuff like that. And you guys, thank you so much. I'm getting comments already. Aminai says, me too, Rodney. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm lost. Let me just move up a little bit here. I, I missed out on the comment here. Let's see. Is that it there? Hmm. Maybe there are some, uh, I don't think it says, me too. Rodney's situation was a game changer for a lot of reasons. All right. Um, a little, um, not, I'm not sure what that comment said, uh, means there. And Joanne McKnight, CPA, says, peace and blessings. Saw you on the lead attorneys. I love the truth. Thanks for sharing facts. I'm just really, I appreciate that, y'all. I'm, I'm always coming from a place of truth, you know, and as a nurse, sometimes we have to give that hard truth. You know, there's, you know, that's part of the whole um, dynamics of being that. And I just, you guys are just really, really, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed with it because I'm just grateful that I know that the more energy, the more we're putting our um, hearts and mind in the right place and we're just seeking truth, we're not here to hurt anybody or to, um, talk bad about anybody. We're here seeking the truth and and love and peace for our uh, dear sister here. And got some more comments. Judas Blake blanks. 
Thank you so much. CNN just announced that there has been an arrest in the Shanquilla Robinson case. All right. The arrest was made yesterday at 3 p.m. They saw who they just showed the video of Dejanae Jackson beating her. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so grateful for that. And um, thank you all for like bringing this stuff to the attention. So this is exactly what, you know, the truth the truth will always come, you know, to the light. The truth will come to the light. The truth will come to the light. All right. Unbiased, unbossed. Laugh out loud. She meant the Rodney King being <laughs> was impactful to her. Okay. You know, yeah, I forgot that I said that I talk fast, y'all, and my mind is always blowing really quick. I forgot that I was mentioning that. <laughs> See, I'm dating myself. I wanted to say that I'm likening this to that. Because the thing that happened with the Rodney King, and let me just qualify myself. I'm originally from Los Angeles, California, and I grew up in the 70s, 80s, and was a full-fledged adult in the 90s. And I remember um, the Rodney King case. You know, like I said, we, I grew up there. And so this police violence and all that stuff was always going on. And at that time, you know, the big video cameras were something. And so we didn't have phones on camera. So all of the different things, you know, that now people just go ahead and post wasn't available. So this was the first time that an actual videotape of this beating was released. And after the verdict, the energy in the neighborhoods was really, really tense because there was, um, I believe it was a Korean lady who had just shot um, Latasha Hardiman. Y'all can see this on the Netflix too. This had happened and she was acquitted for it. She, she got off and she had been known in the neighborhood to, you know, pull out guns on the kids. It was like that. And she weren't, wasn't the only one. So black people in the community was like frustrated with being treated that way. And when they said, you know, not guilty for the Rodney King, it was like the straw that broke the camel's back. And within moments, they, you know, at that time, the it was TV was the news. They interrupted this program to bring you this special report. And it was Florence and Normandy and people were angry and violence. And, and it was like a rage and it was contagious. I remember, you know, feeling it too, because it was always just frustrating to see all this stuff happening. And then they would gaslight us and say, you know, we're just, um, it's all in your mind and all this stuff. So Long story short, that with this situation with Shanquilla Robinson, that video surfaced, had it not surfaced, they probably would have been allowed to get away with this because, you know, they were feeling like, you know, most people wouldn't have had the money to, um, a, a lot of times when a death occurs, people aren't ready for it. Like there's what, that's why there's things like GoFundMe when people are asking to, you know, get help with um, burying a, a, a person or something, burying a loved one, excuse me. And, you know, so they actually had the money to be able to get all these documentations and the body back and all that stuff. And with now the internet, these things are out there and people are, you know, can't believe their eyes with what's going on. So, uh, um, that Rodney. Okay. <laughs> um, unbiased boss, an uh, unboss said, yes, I am happy. This is going mainstream. Exactly. And you really inspired me because, um, i made one live video a few days ago on this, um, case. I've been for the last week talking about this, um, Darnell Brooks. And I noticed that people were interested in that. So I just kept making those videos. However, I kept seeing, um, videos about Shanquilla. And so I just couldn't. So I got back on, I did another live and, um, you know, put it towards, uh, Miss Shanquilla and, um, it, you know, didn't really do too well. So I just kept on about, um, you know, the Darrow thing. And then I had an opportunity to get on the lead attorney show and I just couldn't take it anymore because I had been, I saw these videos and I could see, you know, the thing. So I just felt like I just had to say that because they were trying to paint a narrative and, and with all this fake um, documentation and all that stuff. And if we just look at the science, we know full well that it's impossible for her to have had some signs of life 
if the autopsy report, and we know if a broken neck, you know, you're not breathing and all that, all that. So let me see here. I was saying, that, <laughs> okay, uh, that's ominous uh, again. I, I thank you so much for your, your comments here. And unbossed in, okay, I already read that one. And Judith Blake's Justice for Shanquilla Robinson. This case hit my heart deeply. Yes, ma'am, it hit my heart deeply too because I'm also a mother. I have a 24 year old daughter, I have two sons and one daughter. And my daughter, you know, 24, she's a young, independent woman. You know, um, you know, this could have been her. You know, this could have been her. And I'm just grateful that now, we, you know, the more we're talking about these things, we could educate one another so we can be able to see red flags and know what a real friend is and what a real friend isn't, you know, because a lot of times we may have some indications. If you, um, you know, if you have a person around you and you can sense jealousy or any type of resentment or something like that, those are not friends, right? Those are the type of people that will kind of sleep you and then sneak you like what they did there because if everything was set up, there was an actual video that was posted on Shanquilla's um, um, Instagram where it shows her, you know, she's walking around and I'm assuming that she was um, naked because she says in the um, the video, um, where y'all, um, where y'all bitches at? It don't take that long for you hoes to get naked. And I'm sure some of y'all have heard that one, right? And then she comes into a room and everyone else is completely dressed. And then the next thing we know, we see this horrible, horrific video. So, you know, we have all these different clues and stuff like that. So that's why, you know, it really did affect me deeply too. Amin Eyes says, exactly, Unbi unbiased. I'm 44, so it's still fresh in my mind. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you you, you was a little, little tight back then. <laughs> All right, Amin Eyes. Okay. I didn't know you was representing from this little middle, the middle age group. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. So let me see where am I at on there. Uh, oh, here we go. All right. Missy Michonne's in the house throwing up the fire signs. All right. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the support. Yeah. Speak on it. That's right. Like I've been saying recently, my new motto is no more moments of silence. Right. I think that's how we get into these situations because these abusers, they, they, they're counting on you being silent. Right. So as long as everyone's silent, we're not shining light on it. So no more silence. This is moments of speaking. We speak in the names of these victims. Shanquilla Robinson, we are speaking these names out loud. We're speaking it out. No more silence. Yes, speaking on it. It says, um, Amini says, who you deal with is important. That is extremely key right there. Who you deal with is important. So you, you want to know. So that's why it's important to listen to people's words, feel how they're saying it. Like I said, <laughs> you want to stop, look, this, look, listen, and feel, right? That was one of the lines we used to say when you're, you know, learning CPR, look, listen, and feel for, you know, signs of life. You want to look, listen, and feel for negative energy, right? These are indicators and stuff like that. So you want to always be paying attention because these sneaky ones, you know, they'll kind of sleep you, make you feel like they're your friend, and then get you in a situation. And then by the time you see these red flags, it's too late. You know, it's too late as we saw there. All right. Judas Blakes with another great comment here says, Mexico know that the world is fighting for justice for Shanquilla Robinson. And I believe that they will bring justice to protect their image. We Americans travel there on vacations and spend money. Exactly. And I feel the same way because the reason why. OK, so. All right. So just like you said, OK, so. If, is it, if this is a tourist spot, a vacation spot, people need to know that they're going to be safe. Right. So you mean to tell me if I, you know, if I go to a spot and I get injured on vacation that the doctor is going to say, well, if you don't have enough money or, you know, maybe if I'm out in the boonies out there or something like that. But I believe that these tourist spots are not going to have those type of situations like that, you know. And I know, too, like I said, I grew up in South Central um, 
South Central Los Angeles, and we about two hours away from um, San Diego, which is like a, you know, skip over the border. And people knew that you don't go over, you don't drive your car over to Tijuana because those federales, they're going to, you know, you got to be able to, you know, they'll make their own toll bridges. And if you ain't got the cash to toss over there to them, they going to confiscate your car. You, you know, you may be stuck over there and they do you all kind of dirty, right? This has been going on for forever, right? So that's why their little plan that they was like trying to document to try to steer the narrative to say, oh, these things were happening. That's why you have to always look at the facts because these narcissists and abusers will always try to give you story, right? But the truth is the truth and facts are facts. And science and math can't be disputed. It is. It just is. All right. Let's see here. All right. So uh, <laughs> this here is our little TLA mastermind people. Um, Am and I is giving a shout out. Say, hey, Messy Michonne. All right. And she's uh, saluting back there. All right. And Judith Blake says, my oldest daughter is 52 years old and I have a granddaughter, 26. I thought my children... I taught my children to trust their instincts. That is so important. That is so important. Yes. And I tried to, you know, do that too. And, um, you know, I always say, you know, feel and stuff like that. You know, people think I'm oversensitive, but a lot of times you have to be your own little radar. You have to, you know, look at stuff, you know, watch things and dissect them, you know, and uh, you are the only one that can interpret your, um, observations right so it's very important very important um and i says americans commit the crimes not mexicans let's not forget that too many acting too many acting like she's got beaten by maria in guadalupe mexico gas been safe for me and safe for me the numerous times i've been there OK, I, I agree. And that's why I'm feeling like a lot of these people have probably been doing these type of setups like the people that, you know, think of these things. These are old tricks like this ain't nothing new. It looks new for people like us that aren't criminal minded or always trying to think of how you can get away with something. Right. So when we see these things, we're like taken aback because a, a regular person don't have these thoughts, right? So yes, we're we're definitely um, not trying to um, say that it's, it wasn't the, the you know the Americans doing this kind of stuff here. All right, mastermind sisters in the house. That's right. We in the hizzy up in here representing and really showing how you know the people really have the power because think about this. Years ago, it was up to the news if they were going to take the case and put it out there. But now, since we have a voice with the YouTube and different other different social medias, they have no choice but to hear us because if I'm saying it and somebody else is saying it and more of us are saying it, we're just we're growing it. So you have to look at what the mass of the people are saying. We are the news. We have the power. So we have to stick together. And they know that that's why they try to keep most of the victims, everybody isolated. And that's why it's important to share, share so you can learn from that and help somebody else. And then you are going towards becoming a survivor, right? Because we can't help being victims. It's not your fault if somebody victimized you. you, you know, it's not your fault. But what you can do is to heal from that, acknowledge it. And that way you can grow towards becoming a survivor. And that's where you have the powers, power in being a survivor because you're still here for a reason, right? And that's why we are here to keep lifting our voices for Shanquilla Robinson who can't speak for herself. Since I'm watching CNN, they haven't mentioned anything about an arrest. Okay, let's see if I can um, pull up CNN. So it's like a, 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 live, um, a live something. It says this autocorrect is killing me. <laughs> I hear you on that one, uh, I'm and I. Uh, and a lot of times, like you know, I'm trying to say something and then it keeps correcting and it comes out all screwy. Yeah, I totally agree. Sometimes I, 
uh, autocorrect. <laughs> Let's see here. There has not been an arrest, just the warrant being issued. Okay. Yeah. And I believe um, unbiased, unbossed had made us aware of that uh, too yesterday that, you know, they um, have announced the arrest warrant. So I, 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 my hopes and prayers are that they're going to look in, you know, more and more people because they're, you know, like um, the lead attorney had on his um, show as far as like they're investigating, you know, the doctor, the police and the D, the DA since it was their story. So for me, it just appears like it was one of their look. You know, I had their scams. Everybody have like a little scam or something like that. Just like the federales at the borders and stuff like that. They had a little scam that, you know, that you got to come over there with a certain amount of cash. If you want to go to Tijuana and then, you know, make it back. I'm talking about, you know, growing up there in uh, Los Angeles and stuff. And then, too, I worked in with a lot of Hispanic people and stuff. And then they give me the real um, down low on, you know, going over there to TJ, going over there to Tijuana, you know, how to get back and all that stuff. And you. Never took your car. Take that trolley. <laughs> Take the trolley if you want to get back. But um, <laughs> look at me. I'm all over the place. I have another comment here from Amanai. It says, there, okay, I think I just read that one. Yeah. All right. Amanai says, my issue is with whoever is helping them hide. What is wrong with them? Wow, that is so true. You know what I mean? Like, it says a lot about the person like we I've been talking about enablers. Right. So we've got these um, enablers that supporting the abusers. And a lot of these abusers are narcissists. So they have what we call flying monkeys. And these people are so brainwashed with the with the abuser that they're you know willing to do whatever they they are told to do. And they're willing to support the abuser, you know, regardless, because they, they are on um, team abuse. So, yeah. Yeah, it does say a lot about the person, the people that um, support somebody to do something like that. Because just like we saw it, they saw it too, right? So, yeah, that's one of the sad things about um, the abusers. And that's another reason why a lot of victims don't say anything, because if you speak up and now the abuser got everybody on their side and they've already told uh, everybody that, you know, oh, yeah, the, this here victim is crazy. So when you go, ah, well, I've been abused. Right. They just sit back all calm and go, see, you know, told you she was crazy. So that's why it's important that we don't just like get distracted when they start feeding us different stories about um, the doctor was there <laughs> um, pushing um, <laughs> pushing medication, right? Uh, and one of the things that I, I thought was so comical is because um, like, okay, so as a nurse, when I would watch different TV shows like ER, any type of show where they're talking about medical stuff, most people in the medical field for real, we laugh at that stuff, especially like surgeons and stuff like they have them in surgery, no mask on, or they they scrubbed up and then they touch and put, you know, they break and stir up all the different things that, you know, if you work in that industry, you know, that, that that's right. That's wrong. That's not how that goes. Like it, it just cracks me up when they show doctors <laughs> starting IVs and pushing meds. Doctors don't do that stuff. Nurses do. Right. <laughs> you know, and okay. So most of y'all have been to the doctor, correct? Right. And sometimes you may stay at the doctor's office for a long time. Right. But, you you know, you've been seen by a lot of different things. When has the doctor spent an hour in there with you? If you if you're at the doctor's office for three hours, trust me, the doctor may have spent between three to six minutes actually in your room talking with you, dealing with you. But, you know, in between time, you know, you got labs or you did this. They went, took your weight and all that stuff. But the actual hands-on time that you're spending with the actual physician has never been an hour because a physician <laughs> doesn't have an hour to give to these types of tasks. That was one clue that would show that it that was totally fake. And um, the other clue is the fact that they um, chose the word, the, the drug adrenaline. Like no one says that it's, you know, it's epinephrine and no one's walking around with, um, you know, CPR drugs on them, especially not the doctors. Right. Um, you know, so 
it was just everything was just unbelievable. Was, you can tell that it was story told by some <laughs> told by some you know ridiculous people. Let's see here. Is that where I'm at? Yes. All right. Almond Eyes is giving me so much love here. She says, I love ER. That is one of my favorite shows. Okay. Yeah. See, I couldn't sit through those kind of things because when I see them doing stuff that's totally wrong, like I remember there was a um, show that Jada Pinkett did a few years back uh, called Hearthorn, right? And it used to drive me crazy when she would, you know, set up the ventilators and the tubing. <laughs> I, it was just all wrong. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, you and it's, you know, dripping into the person's airway, just all kind of stuff that, you know, if that's part of how you work in your uh, your job, that you know that that's fake. But for entertainment purposes, it looks good to say that somebody grabbed a, a, a you know, a needle and stuck them in the chest with a shot of adrenaline. Like <laughs> it, it don't work like that, y'all. That's just that's not. That's not how it's done, all right? So <laughs> all this uh, Pope fiction stuff. Yeah, fiction, that's the key word right there. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, I'm just excited that, you know, we um, talking about this, we sharing this stuff and that um, we will be getting just, or at least we're shining light on this whole new term that I'm just being made aware of, femicide. Like I hadn't, you know, I hadn't heard I hadn't heard of that before. I had not, you know. And like I said, I'm I'm middle aged here, so a lot of these terms are new for me. This whole um, manosphere and blue pill, red pill. I'm thinking that means something about the Matrix. There was a movie um, back, I think it was 1999, The Matrix with Keanu Reeves. I'm is that what y'all talking about when y'all talking about blue pill and red pill? <laughs> Because um, anyway, I don't remember which one of the pills it was to take you to get to the matrix, but um, whatever it is, take the pill so you can get out of the matrix, right? I, I don't remember which one. I need to go back and rewatch that one <laughs> if that's what uh, the folks was talking about. But um, what I want to say is that the reason I'm talking about uh, this again today is that um, Unboss Unbiased actually did a reaction video to... Um, a video that I was a part of, I was on the panel for the lead attorney, and um, I was. We were talking about this Shanquilla case, and I really didn't think anybody was listening to me. I really did. I was like, okay, they're just thinking that I'm not knowing what I'm talking about, and I was hoping that I would be able to express it enough to where, you know, it's like, can't you see? Like, you know, can't you see that this is what's going on here, and. Um, Let's see what is Amina says, yes, that is where the pill came from. Okay. Red gets you to red gets you to the matrix. Blue keeps you stupid. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amina. Like I really was in, you know, kind of embarrassed to ask to, you know for the clarity on that because I didn't want to seem old and outdated but um thank you so much yes all right cool okay so then I guess I'm red pill because um yeah so I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm red pill because I definitely, you know, I, I'm participating in the matrix because I'm down here, but I definitely don't trust the people down here in the matrix because if that's true, then they're just like the machines that they could freak out on you at any time. As we saw those friends, you know, they're probably, um, yeah. So, you know, yeah, this, Ooh, this real deep then. <laughs> wow. So let me just make sure that I'm taking my time. Um, with um, what I'm saying here, since this is live. Okay. All right. Excuse me while I take a sip of my super beats. <laughs> yes, beats are very good for your cardiovascular health. And um, I take this here, super beats here, helps with the blood pressure, your heart and all that good stuff, right? Beats, beats in any form. I, and I, I make beats, beet soup, um, <laughs> a beet parade and all that good stuff. Beets are good for the skin and it's a natural aphrodisiac too. <laughs> beets. All right. So anyway, I just have to throw that off up in there because I'm I just, I was getting a little parched there. But yes, so we're excited to be, um, you know, still talking about this and uh, getting all this attention about it and people feeling more safe to, you know, speak on, speak on this whole, uh, speak out on this behalf here. So what I was saying was that, so I, I, I wake up this morning 
And um, the whole time when I'm out there, after I've done the, um, I'm doing the live, I, I get off of the um, panel and I'm still like kind of like pumped up and I'm in the chat. Usually I don't really do too much participating in the chat because I'm focused on, you know, what's being said. But this time I'm actually participating because I'm looking at my channel here. And when I started on that live, I had 979 subs and I needed, uh, what, 31, 21 uh, subs to make the thousand. And before, you know, within minutes, <laughs> it and it was coming from the um, the chat people. And I was just so like, you know, taken back, like, wow, this, you know, because it wasn't like it was the first time I had been on the lead show. <laughs> y'all might, might not recognize me, but uh, Treya, no, I was joking. But um, so I've been on there and I'm known for, um, you know, standing up for the truth and all that stuff. And then as a nurse, you know, we're patient advocates, you know, so, we're, you know, it's not, um, it's not uncommon for me to, you know, stick up for um, somebody or whatever like that, because that's who I am. I've always been a nurse. I've always wanted to be a nurse, even when I was a little girl at five years old, and I was cleaning out the noses of the my uh, my little boyfriend, Billy Barron. Um, <laughs> so I was always that one. I was always that um, kid that wanted to, you know, patch up the boo-boos and, you know, um, do all that stuff. Yeah. Even in the 80s when we was doing, when they, uh, not we, but, you know, I was part of it, not a part of it. I, was, I lived in it, right? We had the gangs and all that stuff. So um, sometimes when, you know, people get caught up in those shootings and stuff, you know, you couldn't go to the emergency room because they called cops if you got a gunshot wound. So <laughs> I was the local nurse and would <laughs> pour rubbing alcohol on a book gunshot wounds to <laughs> neighborhood gangsters. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm just laughing because, you know, that's just how it was. And it was a trip because, um, yeah, um, this was, I want to say it was 1986. And this was in, in the heart of it. Like we was like, you know, people was, we was not, I keep saying we because I was, you know, part of there, but I wasn't doing any type. I wasn't a gangbanger girl and none of that kind of stuff, but it was just there. And, um, you know, so it was, it wasn't uncommon that, you know, <laughs> um, you know, brothers was getting shot and stuff, but, and, you know, you can't go to the police, especially if you was, um, doing some shooting too, and maybe, you know, you may have done some, you know, you did some stuff. So you, you know, they didn't, they knew enough not to get the wound infected. So, you know, somebody had to pour it and they would just be so tough, like when, Cry or nothing. I know it was burning too. <laughs> Pour that alcohol, rubbing alcohol straight on the open bullet hole and um, stuff like that. So anyway, that was uh, always been my calling. I always wanted to be a nurse. I, I did enjoy it for those 30 years. However, you know, um, you know, get to a certain age, middle age stuff is when you realize that, you know, this work thing is not, you know, get tired. All right. Get tired. But I still, you know, I'm still a nurse. You can't, not be it like I'm always assessing I'm always oh like I can see I can look I can tell I'm in this grocery store I'm at Walmart I can see the body shape like oh it looks like he's got CHF you know <laughs> I can I can see it right you know I've seen enough I've seen enough and um you know it's not uncommon if you've seen so many um people die you can see a body how it looks when it's you know when it, the spirit is left, different things like that. So this is all part of it, all part of it. So back to the point, the reason why I'm, you know, back here speaking about it is because people started caring. People started caring. Unbossed, unbiased, did a whole reaction video on it. I was, I'm touched to think like, wow, somebody is really listening and, you know, or feeling the same way too. And, um, you know, want some type of justice. I right, have a new comment here. Poetic Kel says, hi. Yes, I believe that because the persons that was holding the camera phone, which was her friend, Kali, Kali said, you said you not going to fight back. And she said, no, I can't. Yeah. You know, 
I um I I, I saw I mean I saw another video with a, um I'm not sure if that was the same name, but there was um a guy who um, was trying to distance himself, said he, you know, wasn't there that day and he was making up more of the story and stuff. And it almost sounded like that was his voice on that, um, on the cameras, you know, the the video saying, you know, clearly can you at least fight back? You know, how horrible just knowing that, you know, somebody was vicious enough to see that. And I know that it was, um, hard to see because everybody was feeling some kind of way it's because your subconscious saw the injury like maybe you didn't know what to look for but your subconscious saw it your, your subconscious saw when her back was and her neck was fractured subconscious saw everybody saw and knew that they could put that was the reason why you know um Shanquilla Robinson is no longer with us it was because of that that was that was it right there. There's your, that, that's it. And it was that same way with the Rodney King beating. Like we saw that it was all over the news. Everybody saw multiple police officers surrounding this man with those batons and beating him till they was tired and exhausted, taking breaks, tagging each other in and out, <laughs> tag you and shoot in the next one, come in, he tap him out. They go in and they did that. Right. And it was videotaped. Everybody saw it. Then, and they played the, um, they they showed the court case, right? And this was something new during that time, you know, to actually show the courts. But like now we see like with this Daryl Brooks guy, like playing the, you know, watching the court proceeding and stuff like it's, it's, you know, it's nothing. Every, that's an everyday thing. But this was something new. And I remember because I was, um, I was at home. I had just took my, um, nursing boards. And back then you could only take it like twice a year. You had to go to the plays and everybody who had graduated, you know, was able, sitting for the um, nursing boards. So I was waiting. It took six weeks back then before you got, if you passed the license or not. Nowadays it'd be hours, you know, everything online so quick. So lucky you young people. But anyway, back then, so I'm waiting, right? I'm waiting um, to get my results, to, you know, for my license. And that's when they announced not guilty. And like I said, within seconds, the next thing was we interrupt this report. And that was the news stayed on all night. There was no more TV. It was like three days and the city on fire. And it was, it was crazy. It was like a real war, right? It was, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. And they had to bring the national guard out. And it was, it was crazy. I did not go out there or loot or riot, y'all. I did. I stayed in the house. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do it. But I, I understood how it initially started. And then it, afterwards, people were just, you know, being ridiculous. But it was just like a boiling something. And then just prior, they let the Asian lady off for blasting in the back of the head a 15 year old girl, neighborhood girl who had been in that store multiple times. You know what I mean? So, they had a history, um, the Asian community, of having all their stores were in our neighborhoods and stuff. And so, you know, it was just all these little accumulation stuff. So that's why I'm believing and I'm hoping that now that this is out, that we won't have the same type of reaction. But, you know, we still see that um, there's a lot of violence and stuff that's been documented and put out on video. And now things are changing. You know, we're seeing that people are actually getting punished and found guilty, you know, for real. So we, you know, change is coming, you know, we just have to stay patient people and um, keep on working for that change. And Poetic Kel says, at that point, she was paralyzed. Exactly. 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 And like I said, I spent years working on um, these paralyzed patients. Like I said, Back in the 80s, when we were doing all the shooting up and all that stuff and drive-bys and the killings and all that stuff, everybody that got shot didn't die. Some of them got shot in the neck. Some of them got shot in the ear. And then they end up being paralyzed from the neck down, right? So we know that if you have a, um, any type of fracture in your um, spinal here in these C vertebrae, that controls, you know, your brainstem controls your respirations, right? That your breathing, like you don't have to tell your um, lungs to breathe, right? Like, yes, I'm doing this, right? I'm telling my hand, I'm, this is me. 
I in control of this. This is nothing is, you know, involuntary, right? So breathing is an involuntary motion, an involuntary function. You don't have to remind your lungs to expand, right? Your brain is handling all of that. So once the message has been, you know, the line, the um, information line has been severed, the brain cannot send the signal. The signal is not going to reach, right? So there's no movement, right? So me in the 90s, after I got my nurse's license, I was taking care of these, you know, ex gang bangers, you know, or some civilians that got caught in the crossfire that had, you know, it was a bunch of gunshot wounds to the neck. And um, these were big, you know, people, big guys, six foot two, you know, or, you know all, all kind of stuff. Patients on ventilators. Paralyzed from the neck down. I mean, you can't, some of them, I'm so sorry, y'all. Some of them, depending on where the injury was, some of them could move, a, you know, do this, right? But they also had to be on the ventilator. So they'll, they'll have a hole here in the neck. So we connect the ventilator to have them breathe. They could still talk, everything, all that stuff. Like, I'm not sure if some of y'all remember um, Christopher Reeve. He played Superman back in the uh, in 1978, 79. Anyway, he did all the first little Superman movies. He um, was became a quadriplegic when he was his spinal. He broke his neck in a horseback riding um, uh, injury, right? And he was on a ventilator. He tried to do a lot of work for spinal cord injuries and things like that, um, he was a, a quadriplegic, right? So um, I then lost my, my little point here. Let me get some more of these here comments over here before you start moving up too fast. Let's see here. Poetic Hell says, oh, you're saying it was the other guy calls, I believe her friend Kali set this whole thing up. Hmm. OK, now, I don't know all these names and stuff like that. OK, I thank you for shedding this light on here. Wow. OK, um, I don't know, you know, because like I said, I just heard a voice on the video. And then when I saw um, some guy on his um, social media platform giving his version of the story, you know, telling all these lies and stuff, I felt like that might have been the voice behind it, you know, but again, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. So we're thinking that the friend set it up. That's what makes me feel like this was so vicious. Like they was feeling like, okay, yeah, we can just leave this body over here in Mexico and just, you know, get back and tell the people anything. And a lot of times people don't realize, especially these ones that are w willing to, you know, commit this type of act, that some people have loved ones out there. Some people have people that's looking for them. Some people have people that care for them. And Shanquilla Robinson had her mother and her father, her parents was like, no, you're not going to just tell us this. We want, we want, we need more. We, we, we're looking for answers and we're not stopping till we get some answers. However, there could be some people that may not have had the $6,000 to get the body back and would have just, you know, let that go. Right. So they are probably, you know, counting on people just writing folks off, you know, just she's just another young black woman, you know, this whole femicide thing. So I'm just grateful that we're adding value to women. Women, you know, we need we need this. Right. Because a lot of these things happen and we're just kind of swept under the carpet. And now we're seeing that it's not just the men we have to be cautious and aware of that these women too are acting out in this way. So these are, what are they, are they blue pills? Yeah, so the, the blue pill people, so you wanna be um, careful if you're hanging out with the blue pill people because at any moment the machine could get off up in them and then you, you know, you you finished, right? You toast, you, next thing you know, you wake up and you around, you know, you know, you surrounded by um, the machines. Isn't that what they call them? Agents, the agents, right? <laughs> Yeah, so these if you got if you hooked up and got friends with all these blue pill people, just be careful, right? You could be calling the agents in at any time. Let's see. Tina Marie, hey, she said, you guys was all there. I thought you all go down, you witnessed a murder in real time. You was there. Am I right or wrong? Hmm. You see, you guys was all there. I think that's supposed to be there. 
the ear. I thought you all go down. You witnessed a murder in real time. You was there. Am I right or wrong? Um, I'm feeling maybe this person is um, talking to the those friends that was there, you know, because again, you know, if to be there, it was shocking for us to see it in the video. So imagine what it must have been like to actually be there, right? And to see that and that know that moment when, uh-oh, we went too far, right? But according to um, Poetic Kells, that it was planned to go that far, you know? So I don't know. I don't know if at the end they were trying to cover it up or if this was the plan altogether because maybe people have been, you know, doing this for a while, like how to, um, you know, dispose of a body to where, you know, they can't really trace it back. Like sometimes people will, you know, drive your body to another state. Like, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, know some people, you know, um, from Los Angeles and then they, you know, make the little drive down to Vegas, some stuff happened there. And the next thing you know, your body's in, found in Arizona and you went through, you know, and you just an un, unsolved murder case. You know what I mean? Just think about how many, you know, especially um, women, you know, end up like that, you know, and then they just call them a statistic, say they were, you know, um, prostitutes or something like that. And that, you know, that had no value or nothing like that. And, you know, I guess that's part of the whole trafficking, you know, stuff that takes place, you know, and these are sad situations because once it went through all these little different states that, you know, that woman's now just, a, you know, an unsolved, an unsolved case, you know, and these people are aware of that. And that's why they, that's why they do it. You know, people are, you know, very experts at how to, you know, commit a crime and get away with it, you know. Sometimes years later crimes are solved, you know. But um for the most part, the truth usually comes to light because the truth is the truth, right? And uh, that's how we go. Poetic Kell says, no, we wasn't there. We're just talking. Okay, so this person is trying to um start mess up in here. <laughs> Tina Marie, let's see here. I'm going with it. I know that. Okay, come on now, y'all. We here. This is peace and love here. And two, we're not going to even go like that about attacking one another. This is a, a learning moment right here because a lot of times, you know, people who are people who are still trying to be um, emotionally hijack you will may leave comments to try to stir the pot to get you, you know, the uh, distracted, right? So a lot of times you have to just kind of ignore these comments or something like that because these I call them gremlins, right? <laughs> they that's what they do, right? They try to they're trying to distract you, like we saw that with Duro Brooks, right? That's what they do. They distract you with all these little bitty different stories, so you can just get frustrated. Ah! And now we're going back and defending something and battling, going back arguing, and now we've lost sight of the real issue which is Shanquilla Robinson. And no, we weren't there, but we saw the video. That is correct. We all saw the video and we felt something when we saw the injury take place. Even if you didn't know it, your subconscious saw it and know it. And that's why the video is so alarming and people are so moved and don't know why they're emotional behind it. Because you saw the brutality. We saw when she was helpless and wasn't able to defend herself. And we saw her continue to get hit and kicked and tossed around. We saw that. It was hard to watch. It was hard to watch. So, all right. So we're going we're gonna to cut out that kind of little stuff there. Team Marie, um, you know, we happy for you if you're here to um, shed light and love. Her so-called friends, I'm going to talk about. Oh, oh, her so-called friends I'm talking about. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We all here on the same page. You know what I mean? We here on the same page. We ain't trying to um, cut down nobody for, um, you know, making their comments and stuff. Because one thing I tried to do, um, you know, I'm going to 
read the comments and stuff, but certain things you just take with a grain of salt, especially if you know you're coming from a place of truth and love. You're not trying to hurt anybody. So, you know, feel free. I don't want us to not, you know, I want this to be a safe space for everybody to be able to um, say their piece. And then, you know, we can work out the stuff to see what's fair and what's true and all that stuff. Pick out the bones, right? This is what we need to do. All right. It says, Oh, my bad. Oh, look at there. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> See, you didn't even have to say that because it went on right down the, the line. Y'all already had it together. There. That's what I'm saying. I'm loving it. Poetic hair said, oh, my bad. That's right. That's what I'm saying. It's you. We should never be too big to apologize, right? And ask for forgiveness and stuff like that. That's all it takes. You know, everything is already solved. Like, it's okay to, um, you know, get upset about something and speak your mind. But when it's time, it doesn't matter who says, um, I'm sorry, as long as it's said. All right, we got a special one in the house. Greetings from Nerda. Hey, Nerda, what is going on? Greetings, Miss Lady. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. And see, so I'm, I'm just grateful. That, that made me feel good that, um, you know, it was going down like that. It looked like it was going down somewhere. And then, booyah. Peace and love. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> love wins all. Love always wins. And I'm so grateful that, you know, it is winning. I am winning here. All right. Then says, okay, there has been discussions that this was over PPP loan money. What? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Mm. Okay. Now, I hadn't heard that one. Let's see here. In Poetic. Uh, Kel says a PPP loan. Interesting because I Googled Shanquilla and it said her net worth was 550 K. Yeah. I had heard something about um, millions. Like put her net worth in the, in the millions too. Um, yeah. So, and for what we can see, Shanquilla was a together young woman. She had her stuff together, which could really be a reason why, you know, she was envied a lot of times, you know, um, especially if you're being successful and you're following your dreams, people, some people will be angry and jealous, right? They're angry and jealous because they don't have the confidence to make their own dream come true. So they want to, you know, stop you from yours, right? So that's why it's super important to make sure that the group that you surround yourself with, you're not at the top. You're not doing better than everybody in your group. Try to make some balance and have, you know, um, up, upgrade yourself and stuff like that to, to make it, um, let's see, 500K braiding hair is not likely. No, she was a, um, a supplier. Like she had a business. She had her own business where she was supplying hair. And you know, black women going to pay some money for some hair, right? <laughs> I, 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 y'all just saw that I had invested in some hair, right? But no, so she's selling that. So, you know, this is a, a consumable product and not just black women, because some white women out there, other women too are getting these hair extensions. So it's a lot of money in that. I actually, I'm not going to lie y'all. Um, <laughs> A couple months ago, I was actually thinking about that. I was like, hmm, maybe I. <laughs> but then I got this little alopecia from that quick weave. And I was like, nah, I don't want to be part of the problem. <laughs> Come out of the weave, y'all. Let me stop. All right. So you see here, um, Poetic Kelly says, braiding hair wasn't all she was doing. Exactly. Like I said, she she was a businesswoman. She had, she was tight. She she had her stuff together. You know, she was a together. So yes, you're right, sister. That's right. And see Poetic Kel says she ran a clothing brand as well. Okay. I didn't know about that. I know she was, um, you know, um, a supplier of the hair. And there's money off in that, too. I mean, you, you, like I said, sisters be um, spending that money on our hair. We, um, black people spend a good portion of our, I mean, th these these were the statistics back in my day. But we spend, we spend the money, especially since we're going we to spend the money. We're going to spend the money. And, um, you know, we spend the money. We going in there, we getting the hair, we're doing all that stuff, you know. Not all of us, but a, a lot of us are. All right, and see, she said, I do extens extensive research. I did, I do extensive research before I speak. Uh oh. <laughs> all right, then we had Nair to come up in there and see here. This is such a heartbreaking situation. Yes, I agree. 
yeah, you know, it just even still brings tears to my, I'm super emotional about it whenever I'm, you know, thinking about it. And just talking about it is actually making it better. Like, um, you know, that first live that I did on the Shanquilla thing, you know, it was just me, right? And it was very emotional. Having the comments and, you know, um, interacting with you guys makes talking about it a lot easier, too. So it makes it a lot easier. And um, let's see here. Amini says, that was her main job. She had some kind of online boutique. Yeah, un selling stuff online, you can make a grip selling stuff online because you're able to scale, right? As opposed to doing these one on one. So if she's um, selling things online, you know, yes, there's um, definitely a lot of internet millionaires out there making money online. So um, definitely um, has the potential to, um, you know, have that. And then, you know, she's doing all this vacation stuff and she looked the part. You can see that she looked. Um, you know, uh, first class. <laughs> Poetic Kel says she ran a kid's clothing brand called Exquisite Babies. All right. And a woman's clothing brand called Exquisite Boutique. All right. Thank you, Poetic Kel, for really speaking out on y'all hear that? Shanquilla was, she was balling. She was doing the thing and, you know, really making all of us proud, you know, proud of what her accomplishments and stuff. And her name now is going to live on. Poetic Hill says she also modeled, but of course y'all can see that. That's true. And she was very beautiful, uh, very beautiful woman, very beautiful woman, very confident, beautiful woman. And Amanai says, so how did she end up with these people? I'm asking because I'm in Charlotte and I have never heard of any of these folks. Wow. And, and this is one of the things too, like I was saying how when these narcissists are very clever at convincing people, right? And I had heard that um, Shanquilla actually was the one who had purchased, you know, purchased the stuff that they were there on her dime and um, a lot of these narcissists are very good at convincing you, right? And extracting, getting things out of you. And she could have just been, you know, an innocent person that's, you know, happy to help. A lot, a lot of times, especially if you are a person that, you know, you, you, you've, you've been blessed with a lot, so you like to give. Most people, you know, that are have wealthy hearts and so they're givers. They love to give. So, you know, she could have, thought she was doing, you know, nice things for some friends or something like that. They could have been, um, you know, manipulating her and kind of, um, you know, manipulating her and, and steering her down the wrong road, down the wrong road. It's over here, mouse. And Amini says, don't get out of order, chick. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> All right, let me just pull that one out here. Now we not did the order is is that you know this is these kind of discussions we're not gonna be um, scared of. We 